This is the Breadwinner Podcast. Hosted by entrepreneur, influencer, and sales wolf, Tyler Harris. Bringing you the insights from the most successful forward-thinking entrepreneurs and influencers. So that you can rise to the top and make more dough. Now, let's get into the show. All right, what's up, everybody? This is Tyler Harris from The Daily Bread, and I am your, the host of The Breadwinner Podcast. And this is our very first episode, and I am humbled and honored to have with us a very special guest. Over the past three and a half years, as I have waged war on personal change, this guy has been in my ear telling me to be patient, and ultimately do it anyway. And if you looked at my phone right now, his podcast, the MF CEO project is the only podcast that I'm actually subscribed to. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Andy Frisella uh, to give a quick introduction and we'll get right into the questions, man. I cannot thank you anymore <laughs> for being here with us, man. Oh, bro. It's my pleasure, man. Um, I think it's exciting what you're doing and, and, you know, getting, it's been fun to watch you start to develop your own brand and get, this podcast up and running and uh, I'm excited to be a part of it, especially with it being the first episode. I appreciate that. So tell everybody a little bit about who you are. Oh man, I'm a, I'm basically just a regular dude, just like everybody else. But uh, I happen to have found some success in the entrepreneur world and um, been in business for almost 18 years. Uh, have a bunch, a number of very successful companies. Uh, my main thing that I do now is personal development. Uh, speak a lot, do a lot of podcasting, um, got one of the top ranked business podcasts in the world called the MFCEO project, as you, uh, graciously mentioned before. Um, but man, really what I am is, is, uh, not, is somebody who just made a list of shit that needed to be done and I did it. And that's what separates me from everybody else. Man, I appreciate that. And, that, and I think that's what, in the, from the very beginning, drew me to your podcast, which ultimately drew me to all of your content, is that it was real. It wasn't, you weren't getting on there telling people like, hey guys, this is this is super easy. Like, let me plug you into my funnel and I can make you successful. You were like, no, this took 18 years. Like the first X number of years, I made nothing. And then after doing it anyway, do it anyway, do it anyway, do it anyway, over years of hard work, that's what ultimately made me successful. So you weren't painting this like rainbows and unicorns and fairy dust, right? I think that's the biggest problem with this with this whole entire space right now is that, you know, because most people aren't close to someone who's, uh, you know, very successful, multimillionaire business person, they develop this magical sense about it. And they think that somebody else or these certain people have the secret and they don't have it. And a lot of, you know, people take advantage of that. They, it's just like, you know, when people tell you you could take a supplement and it's going to rip off 50 pounds in two months. You know, they take advantage of people's um, lack of knowledge on the subject. And, dude, it's not right. And that's what got me into this in the first place. I saw way too many people trying to sell uh, get-rich-quick schemes and, you know, overnight success schemes and, you know – uh, rags to riches stories that it, it's just complete bullshit, dude. Um, you know, I started when I was 19 years old, the first three years I made $0. The next seven years I made $695. Now those same companies, uh, collectively gross, you know, $200 million a year. And it's going to continue to grow year after year after year. And the idea of, you know, now, and you can have it now and you can be, a baller in two weeks and all this other shit that's being sold to people, it resonates uh, with the most disgusting parts of myself. You know what I mean? And I can't stand it. So yeah. uh, I, I just, I just want to help people understand what it really takes. You know what I mean? I love that man. Cause the, the magic behind that is you, you got fed up with it and all this crap that was out there, all the noise, but instead of just, Stopping there, you said, I'm going to do something about it. And you actually went out and took responsibility and, and started that podcast to put that message out there to be a to be the um, uh, the difference in all of that freaking noise, which is incredible. Like I was on a, on a podcast the other day when and they asked me, like, who are you? 
and it just kind of like hit me in my in like it just hit my brain like at that exact moment I was like I'm just an ordinary person trying to do extraordinary things by doing the extra. <laughs> Dude, and that's it, man. You know, people overcomplicate it because yeah. they want. Dude, we're fed. If you think about everything that we're fed through the media, through social media, we even before social media, we have always been fed the glory stories. We've been fed the lottery winner, the overnight success, the come out of nowhere millionaire, um, you know, the brand new hit actor who's making $20 million of film. We're always told about the stories of winning. And, and it, because we're not told the backstory of any of those things, we're not told about the 20 years that actor put into perfecting his craft or the 20 years that business person put into building the structure underneath them that allowed them to gain success. We assume that it's, it really is quick and easy because we're not told those things. And, you know, telling someone the story of the grind and, and the grit and the dirty shit they had to do to get where they, ha to get where they are. And by dirty, I don't mean like illegal. I just mean, you know, getting in the dirt and, yeah. uh, it's not told man, because it's not sexy. You know, no one wants to tell someone, Hey, yeah, you could be a fucking millionaire, but give me 20 years of your life. You know what I mean? And I just, dude, I just get tired of hearing it. Maybe it is easy for other people, dude, but I can tell you this. I don't know one. I know a lot of successful people, a lot of millionaires and a couple billionaires that I talk to on a regular basis and not one of them did it in 12 months or two years or five years. It took 10 years minimum. And I think letting people know the expectation is important because, and I always use this analogy, you know, when I, when I used to play high school football, my coaches would do this shit. And, and I think you played sports too. Um, my, my, my coach would do this thing where they'd say, okay, guys, we're going to run, we're going to run sprints. And they would never tell you how many sprints you were going to run. They would just say, we're going to run sprints. And so the whole time, you're running, you're running, you're running, you're running, you're running. You don't know how far along you are. And that's most people right now in business. You know, they see these stories of three years, two years, five years, and then they're doing something for six years or seven years, and they think they're doing something wrong, so they end up quitting. When in reality, if they would have stuck with it ten more or three more years, they would have had something going, like something big going. And, and I've always been the type that when I used to have to run sprints, if the coaches said, hey, we're going to run 20 sprints, Dude, I ran my ass off for 20 sprints because I knew how long it was going to take and I would be done. And I didn't have that anger or anxiety or getting frustrated because I didn't know how far along I was in the process. And these guys who were coming out and selling people on this idea of get rich quick, easy success, blah, 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 blah. It's amplified because of the Internet. I mean, there's always been those guys, but now there's tens of thousands of them. And that hurts people because young people who are successful – and who, who, who would normally be successful are getting five, six years in and they think, fuck, I'm not getting good at this. And so they quit and they say, dude, entrepreneurship wasn't for me because of a bullshit standard that was imposed by a bunch of people trying to take money out of their pocket. And that, to me, is the biggest disappointment right now in this space. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And that was the whole reason why I began to document my life on social media because I felt like the person from, you know, 50 to, you know, call it 150,000 in income, they only had two people to look for, towards in social media to get advice, to get motivation, inspiration. And that was the multi, 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 multi millionaire that was living a lifestyle that was unrelatable to them or someone that was faking like they were like that. Exactly. And that was what I loved about your podcast is because you were at that level of success, but you were giving them the real information, not just the, the, the surface level stuff that everybody didn't need. So kind of basically what they were seeing was this misconception from a lot of crap out there. And that leads me right into this first question was, which is what misconception do people have about you that you'd like to set straight? Um, uh I think <laughs> this is going to sound kind of funny because you have to watch my content and listen to my podcast to know this, but people think I'm an angry person. <laughs> um, they, and I get it right. Cause like they're seeing clips. I get passionate, dude. I'm fired up. Like, and if you don't know me, that can come off as I'm pissed off, but I'm not an angry person. I'm actually a really chill person. It's just when I get into teaching mode and when I get into creating content mode, I get excited and that's what people are seeing. And I happen to have like, 
you know, like people say resting bitch face. I happen to have that except for a dude. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I kind of look mean, but I'm not. And I think, you know, that's the biggest thing. Like when people say to me, they're like, dude, why are you so mad all the time? I'm not mad. I'm just intense and I'm excited because I want you to win. And, you know, if you were around me 24 hours a day, you would understand I'm probably the most chill dude ever. Like, dude, if we go have a beer, I'm not like all fucking wound up about shit. Like, it's just, you know, and I think that's the biggest misconception people have about me is that they think they think I'm an angry guy. And I don't think a lot of people even mind that. People like it because it gets them fired up. But but realize that you're only seeing a little bit of my life. You're seeing the highlight of a piece of content where I said some good stuff because I was excited and you're perceiving it as mad when in reality I'm just excited and it's intense. So I would say, I would say that. Well, I mean, maybe after the next Otis and Charlie book, we can have like an Andy Frisella teddy bear that comes out or something like that. And maybe that'll help. I got some, I need some PR work in that department. (laughs) (laughs) So second question, what is one thing that you quit doing that allowed you to win or succeed? You know, just, one of the biggest things we see online is like all these people who post shit. Like, I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care. Dude, if you're posting on the internet, I don't care what anybody thinks. That means you care more than anybody. What everybody thinks. <laughs> exactly. And, and you don't have to tell the world that you don't care what anybody thinks. But like a lot of people, I went through a phase where, you know, people who didn't understand what I was trying to do would make comments to me. Like, let's say my aunts or my uncles, which I only see a few times a year. Right. Just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, people that did people I hadn't seen in a long time, people I went to high school with or college with that don't they haven't seen me progress and evolve. And they would say comments to me at that used to like hurt me. You know what I mean? Like they would say not intentionally being negative, but just like weird stuff. Like, you know, what do you think you're trying to do? Are you trying to be like Tony Robbins? Like st- just stuff like that, like just little things. And I think once, you know, as much as I tried not to care when I would go to make decisions about what I would post or what I would say or what I was going to say in this video or how I was going to develop this product, I would think I would let all those little thoughts that had hurt me from the past creep in and they would affect my decision making. And that hurt me in business. Um, once I let that go and once I quit, once I quit worrying about what everybody else thought, legitimately quit worrying about it, not, not just posting on the internet that I quit worrying. When I legitimately let that go, it allowed me to be who I was a hundred percent, uh, authentically. And that allowed me to create my best content and create my, my best products and, and help lead the best way that I could, uh, become the best coach that I could because I was truly comfortable with who I was. And, you know, we all go through this as entrepreneurs or as people who want success. People are going to say things to us. They're going to say things that upset us. They're going to say things that hurt us. They're going to say things that make us rethink what we're doing and you have to learn to let that shit go and get in tune with who you really are because who you really are is going to come across authentic. It's going to attract the right kind of people and there's enough people in the world that will vibe with who you are authentically that you don't have to pretend to be somebody else or worry about what the reaction will be because the people who don't vibe with it will naturally weed themselves out. They'll be gone and then you're having a lot of fun because now you're surrounded by people who see things the way you see them and you're running a little bit of a tribe, if that makes sense. And, uh, and dude, I would say, you know, genuinely not concerning myself with what people thought of me, even the closest people and becoming my authentic self. That was, that was definitely the biggest thing. Yeah. For that, sure. That's huge, man. And it's, and it's a difference between caring what other people think and allowing what other people think to affect what you do on a daily exactly. basis. There's nothing wrong with taking, you have a wife, um, your brother that you trust, your dad who you trust, let's say they're supportive of you and they're giving you things to think about. That's completely different than, than what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people who are insignificant in terms of, you know, yeah. you, whether you are or aren't, you know, they just force those little questions into your brain that kind of dig at you. And, uh, and dude, I'm all for taking critical feedback. You know what I mean? But you yeah. got to make sure that you vet the people that you're taking it from first to make sure they have your best interests in mind. And it's just, um, and it's just normal human nature. Anytime that you are legitimately going after something huge, it is going to make those other people incredibly uncomfortable that are playing it small. Like that's just, that's right. and, just and, when, it, and when that happens, their, their immediate reaction is to cut down what is, what is shedding light on their 
<laughs> they're playing right. it safe. Well, dude, first of all, most people have scarcity mentality. They think yeah. there's only enough success for one person in the group. Mm-hmm. You know, if they look at it like a pizza. Like if you're you're with four other people, one to six pieces, that means there's only six pieces left for the three other people. And they, if you get more, they're going to get less. That's how most people look at it. Yeah. And the other thing is, is that, dude, it's really hard to swallow – it's hard to look at somebody who's doing what it is you truly want to do and then swallow that you couldn't get it done. Hmm. And you shouldn't worry about that because that's on them. It's not on you. You know what I mean? Exactly. So last question here. One day on your headstone, it will read, here lies Andy Frisella. He was blank. So what's that blank and why? Man, you know, I think about this a lot, not not exactly like this, but I think about why I'm doing this because I don't need to do it. Uh, you know, financially, I don't. It's not something that I need to do. More money at this point in my life isn't going to make that big of a difference. Uh, you can only buy so many cars <laughs> and have so much cool shit. You know what I mean? And like, I've done it at all levels. Um, so, you know, none of that shit to me really matters anymore. And like. I question why I do this because it takes time away from my business. You know, when I go speak or when I do the podcast, it takes time away from my business. So I know that the reason for me doing it has to be very important to me, but I haven't quite figured out why. Um, It's just something I feel like I need to do. And I guess, you know, with that being said, you know, I guess, you know, being someone who makes somebody, you know, everybody around them better is is really ultimately what I want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, whether that be through the podcast or whether it be in person, um, I don't know, dude. Like I've always just felt a calling to do what I'm doing. It's not a business thing for me, you know. Um, will I monetize it eventually? For sure. Why wouldn't I? What the stuff I give out is worth a lot, and people usually don't value stuff unless they pay for it. Um, but I'm not right now, and I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun, and uh, you know, I think it's really. Just be no, just be remembered as someone who made made other people better, man. You know, um, that's huge. It's, I mean, the money will always follow, right? Like yeah. if 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 value and impact is is at the forefront, then the money will always follow. And I've just been so big on right now. Like, what about just trying to be an all time great human being? Yeah, you know, like I, mean, I haven't been an all time great human being all my life. Not that I've been a bad person, but no, dude, like, I haven't either. Yeah. And like, I, like I want when I'm outside of the room or or one day when I'm gone off, you know, off this earth that people look at me like, Hey, you remember Tyler Harris? How dude, that was a, he was a good dude. Like just that alone. Like he was a good dude. Like for people to be able to say that, like that to me now is just everything. Yeah, man. You know, we, we go through phases, right? Like we, we go through our twenties, our thirties, and then, you know, we'll get to our forties, et cetera. And I think we, you know, evolve through those phases um, about what's important and what you want and what you're trying to do. And, uh, you know, if you ask me that question 10 years from now, it might be different. Yeah. Um, but right now, that's that's how I feel, dude. I just feel like, uh, like what you said, I know that, that if I work on it, if I can bring my ability to help people and get people better, it's going to be, it's going to produce good things for everyone. And, uh. You know, I've been fortunate enough to been, to been uh, you know, blessed with a gift of of, uh, of being able to speak pretty well, and uh, you know, using it is something that uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing, and, and uh, you know, hopefully bringing a lot of value to other people with. Well, man, before we before we close this out, I'll tell you, man, when I met you, God, it was a little over 20 months ago. Um, at the Ask Gary V book launch, uh, at that point I hadn't, I had been completely afraid to put myself out there on social media, had zero yeah. presence whatsoever. And, and that meeting that night really was the catalyst to me starting to do that. And it, just in that process of putting myself out there, it's changed the course of the rest of my life as far as where I'm headed. Um, and just where I've placed all of my values and just doing the right thing and doing, um, putting out value and trying to help people like legitimately caring about the one person that randomly sends a message that, that is in need of help. And, and it's changed everything, every other area of my life. And that was directly correlated to that one meeting with you and Gary. And I'm honestly forever grateful for that opportunity. Um, 
there's other people that will be affected the exact same way, man. So let everybody know where they can find you online. Um, most, you can just go to Andy Frisella. Uh, that's A N D Y F R I S E L L A, uh, at Andy Frisella on Instagram is where I do most of my content. Uh, the podcast can be found at the M F C E O T H E M F C E O.com. Um, all my information can be found there. I do a little bit of Facebook, uh, a lot of Instagram, and then a lot of podcasts. So that's kind of where I'm hitting it. Absolutely. Well, again, man, I, I can't thank you enough for being on here on the very first episode. It means the world oh, dude, I'm, I'm to me. Man. And just Probably, like and just bro. like you said, man, like there's no reason, no reason on Monday at at four thirty my time for you to be sitting on here doing this podcast. But that are those legacy type things that will make you great all time 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. And it's those little things, man. It's all about intent, right? Yeah. Yeah, bro. I'm just want to say, dude, I'm proud of you for taking this step. I know you're going to crush it and uh, I'm excited to see where you take this. I appreciate that. And with that guys, that is the first episode of the bread winner podcast. Thank you for listening to the Breadwinner Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and leave a rating on iTunes. For a chance to be on the show, send a screenshot of your iTunes rating to at Tyler Harris page on Instagram, where he'll pick one person every single week. See you next time on the Breadwinner Podcast.